Hey everybody, welcome back to Sounds Like a Drum at Cadence Independent Media. Today is the uh, long-awaited and many times requested hoop comparison day. We're going to use a superphonic and try out a whole bunch of stuff. Today in the first of what is probably going to be a series of videos, we're going to do a little comparison of the three, uh, to me, most common hoop types, which is steel triple flange, die cast, and uh, wood, plywood. And this drum is the one we've used for a lot of these things. It's a superphonic, and again, we use it most of the time because it's sort of a baseline, middle of the road, not super expensive, but also not bottom level drum. It's kind of the de facto. Like to me, when I hit this, it just, that's what a snare drum sounds like. The triple flange hoop is the stock hoop from this drum, uh, same as from the 70s. And we've outfitted the drum today just for real clarity with a brand new batter head, brand new snare side head, and brand new wires. It's a 10 mil coated batter, a 3 mil snare side, and we have 20 strand steel wires on the bottom from Pure Sound. We are going to go for getting the exact same tuning on both sides, and we're actually going to change the top and the bottom. And we're going to kind of stop in between to hear just the top changed. And we're going to treat these hoops, the triple flange, as the sort of baseline for all of this stuff since they are the most common going back for a very long time. So firstly, we're going to listen to this drum as it is. It's got triple flange on top and bottom, and this will be our first kind of bass level sound. Pretty much sounds like a snare drum. Uh, triple flange steel hoops are super common because they're inexpensive. Um, the last time that I had to replace one, I think the one I bought in the store was like 12 bucks or something like that. And they are wonderfully strong. They're also flexible uh, to a certain degree. So if there are any imperfections in the bearing edge or any imperfections in the head itself, they forgive a little bit more um, if you need to have the tension be a little bit uneven on the rim to get the head to play in tune. They are a warm sound. They promote an open sound out of the drum, kind of more overtones, things like that. Um, but they're still plenty loud and they definitely still carry the brightness of the drum. So the next step to me is the other most common and that is die cast. Um, we have some pearl die cast hoops today. And what we're gonna do is change the batter first because usually when I'm using die cast hoops, I just do the batter on the snare drum because sometimes they can make the snare side head a little bit choky just from the added mass, uh, depending on the drum. And I don't think that's gonna happen with this drum particularly, but I have seen things such as the old uh, Stuart Copeland Tama signature snare where they specifically don't put die cast on the bottom. It comes with die cast on the top and triple flange on the bottom to promote openness from the snare side head and then articulation and crack from the batter side, which if you've ever heard Stuart, that's the sound for sure. I really like die cast just on the top. It sounds really good. Um, if you listen really closely, you can hear some kind of funny behavior of the wires underneath the big hits in the center of the drum. And that brings to mind something that is important to remember, which is that if you're going between hoops and any one of them isn't quite level or is differently slightly bent than another one, it's possible that you'll struggle with pockets of tuning on the hoop where 
the hoop itself is pressing on the drum head unevenly. Usually when I hear that kind of high zing from that, and it's not the wires, because we just put these wires on here, it can be something like that, where there's just a little bit of uneven pressure that's sending a tone into the wires after the initial hit. Um, but all that aside, this is uh, much more direct and much more aggressive sounding in the rim shots. And in general, the high overtones from the head are suppressed a little bit from the stiffness and uh, overall weight of this type of hoop. Um, something else that I like about die cast hoops, obviously, is the really strong cross stick sound. It's a little more punchy and I guess it, it, it's, uh, it's a little cleaner sounding to me than with the triple flange hoop. Um, and lastly, if you are a two Bs hitting from above your head kind of guy, uh, which I sometimes am, these hoops are definitely going to handle that a little bit better um, and they're going to retain their tuning better. Um, if I'm playing that way, usually I'll put lug locks where my rim shots are landing, but even so, this sort of hoop is going to resist deforming under the pressure of the strikes, which is important to keep in mind uh, in addition to it making the rim shots a little more kind of punchy and aggressive and, and just louder in general. Now to the snare side. When you're swapping out to a die cast on the snare side, you're going to discover um, that at the same tension for the snare side, the head is going to sound a little stiffer and it's going to feel a little stiffer at the same pitch, which is a little bit tricky and it took me a while to get a grip on this, but when you've used different materials on the snare side hoop, you end up with um, having to kind of relearn what your idea of the feel of tight or loose or whatever is. If you, if you use a drum dial or something like that, I'm, I'm not sure it may be different with that, but when I tune up drums that have die cast on the bottom, I find myself uh, tensioning the other side just kind of differently. But for today, I'm gonna go for the same pitch that it is right now and see if we can get kind of back to this sound, but see how it's gonna change it. So we're at the same pitches as we started off with. Um, I brought it exactly back to the same spot. Uh, to my fingers, the bottom head feels tighter than it did before. And um, I'm not 100% sure of the physics of why that is, but with die cast hoops every time, to me, uh, the pitch and the tension seem different than what you would expect with the triple flange. And now that they're both die cast, things have taken on a kind of bell-like quality in the rim shots, there's kind of a zing on top and a, a different kind of sustain. Right here in front of me, um, the drum is even louder than it was before, but it also feels compressed, not gated, but just kind of like the sound is squashed into the strike and there isn't a lot of like other stuff happening around it. I don't really do die cast on both sides of the drum that much, but certain drums, it's really phenomenal. Um, for instance, our, our video from a little while back of the Tama Bell Brass. That's a drum that rocks die cast on both sides. With something like a Superphonic or something that is thinner metal and that also has rounded over, you know, like folded edges, I would probably just put it on the top to retain some of that body that we were hearing earlier. And also, it frankly just cuts down on the weight of the drum that you're carrying around. Um, there are a lot of different materials also that die cast hoops can come in, which is worth mentioning. Um, and I, I had for a while some zinc die cast hoops from Tama that were at least 50% heavier physically than these pearl, uh, I guess these are steel hoops. And th those hoops choked every drum I put them on um, and I got rid of them. But I have a set of pearls of my own that I use for this sort of thing and they definitely do the thing the die cast is supposed to do. Next we're gonna go for a warmer sound. These are sort of, uh, not knockoffs, but an inexpensive uh, alternative to the Yamaha ply wood hoops. I think these are uh, OCDP and they are awesome 
and not prohibitively expensive like a lot of wood hoops can be. And I've had these for a long time and I've played them a lot and they're still in incredible shape. There aren't really any dents or anything like that in them. Um, I know there are also segment or sort of like stave construction wood hoops. I haven't spent any time with those. These are the only ones that I have. Um, but these have been a lot of fun and these are a much more dramatic sound change than from one metal hoop to a different sort of metal hoop for sure. So we're gonna return to the triple flange on the bottom and start with batter side on one of these. Wood on the top and triple flange on the bottom. Uh, immediately, the overtones are wilder and there are more of them. And I feel like we sort of owe that to how resonant a wood hoop is. It really wants to go with everything that's happening. And I've heard a few people, uh, Akira Jimbo, if everybody remembers Akira, uh, comes to mind as, as saying in an interview once that you know, he likes wood hoops on his snare, his old like signature Yamaha snare, but he doesn't like them on the toms because of this. When you would do fast stuff around the toms, regardless of the tuning, a lot of stuff comes out, a lot of overtones and things that they can kind of overlap. But that wood sound on a snare is pretty rad. And it really changes the character of the drum a lot. I think more than any other um, hoop change that I've tried. My normal move with these wood hoops is with a calf or some kind of natural head because they work together really well to create an, an incredibly organic sound and the rim shot of it uh, almost sounds like some kind of um, like a hand drum or something like that. It's more slappy and less kind of metallic. And the cross stick sound obviously is the best <laughs> with a wood hoop for sure. A couple of things to talk about that are important with wood hoops. Uh, the first thing is that they are the bendiest of hoops. So if you're using a natural head or a thin skin or it's just been on there for a long time, the possibility of the hoop uh, not being level anymore and conforming to the head if the head's not on there straight uh, will happen sometimes with these. So you have to watch out and just make sure that you're not over tensioning one side because it won't have the same resistance as a metal hoop if you are over tensioning one side. Thing number two is they do not fit on every snare stand. And that actually happened to us today. We had the normal pearl stand that we use and I put this on there and we opened the basket all the way and it wasn't happening. So uh, luckily we had a Yamaha hiding in the corner and that worked out. If you're really smashing on these with like hickory or oak sticks or something like that, they will take damage. But I don't really think of these hoops as being for that kind of playing anyway. Um, I, I tend to think of them as more of a, uh, a warm, lower volume kind of sound. I also have noticed that when I use, uh, re regardless of what head I use, these seem to keep the head sounding good longer. Um, I'm not sure if it has to do with how they don't choke things versus a die cast or a metal hoop, but uh, I've, I've found myself leaving the same head on for much, much longer with these hoops than with others and not really noticing that it sounded bad or behaved strangely. So last part now is to put the snare side wood hoop on and uh, kind of go full Monty and see what we end up with then. Obviously super overtony. Uh, it sounds good and it sounds woody and nice. Uh, it's still plenty loud too, frankly. The rim shots are plenty loud. They're a little bit broader. 
But this brings me to what I think is maybe the most important part of this whole process, which is that I don't really tune different types of hoops the same way. Um, for those of you that use like um, drum dials and tuning devices, things like that, uh, I if if I were to be using that sort of thing, I would probably have different schemes for the different hoop materials because they really behave so much differently. And if you have a way that you tune that you kind of stick to, whether it's like pitches or a sort of pitch relationship, uh, they really act differently depending on the material that you're using or the combination of materials. And right now, to me, at the same tensions as the rest of the tunings, this feels like I would want to change the relationship between the heads. Um, maybe not a lot, maybe just a little bit, but to try to get the most out of what has changed because of the, the change in materials of the hoops. So go ahead and experiment with whatever you can get your hands on for different kinds of hoops and see what sounds you can get out of them, what you like. And remember, you know, they don't have to be the same. And even just the character of each different material can be another tool in your arsenal for different sounds. And uh, let us know if you use anything different than this. Um, if you have suggestions for other things you'd like to see, we're going to do more exotic hoops in the future. Today we just kind of did the standard stuff that we had around the shop. And uh, as always, like, comment, and subscribe, and go enjoy your hoops.